I said, stay home for labor. Wait your toilet rolls in there real quick. Have a laugh, have a sup. Keep your spirits up. Cause when this is all over, we've got some asses to kick. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats for Stay Home for Labor. Please welcome your host, Crispin stay Flintoff. Stay home. Hello, welcome. Welcome to Stay Home for Labour, those who are lucky enough to be on Zoom. Uh, we're, we're here for 45 minutes of live interaction. We've got chat, we've got loads of Labour members from all over the country. We've got comedians, five comedians, we've got music, we've got poetry, and we've got Facebook Live as well. So we're all over the place. Uh, I'm all over the place because I sent everyone the wrong uh, password uh, and link to the show so um sorry about that i just wanted a bit more drama for the, for the day um so how, how's everyone doing how are you doing mark i'm good i'm good are you yeah have you been um have you been out uh out and about this week well, i just sat in the garden this morning started a new book um we've got bookshelves galore in here with a lot of unread books so i've got my lad with us come and show you what you're doing here then hurry up so he's, he's got his mask, look. He looks as if he's just going to go do, down the corner shop and, and hold it up. But, you know, we're doing all right. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, introduce uh, this new concept that we're doing at, on today's show because on, on Wednesday we did a discussion with members and, and some of the members were a bit like, you know, they've been in the meetings too much and they just went on and on a bit. <laughs> so what we're doing yeah. today is uh, we've got a minute um limit on everyone who talks and when they go over the minute um mark is going to make this sound yeah we've got that <laughs> got a little bit of that going on and a little bit of that all right so you've got the, the the timer so no one no one can dominate this discussion uh and 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 to start the show off uh we're going what we're going to talk about first is we've got our special guest who's 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 dialed in in uh, Brighton, is it Brighton? Or yeah. yeah, Brighton, not Hove. I always get hey, if you say hey, Hove man. and it's Brighton, then everyone gets upset, don't they, Rob? Uh, he, he can't hear. He's not listening. Anyway, um, Lloyd, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, um, so, what? What? T tell us your story about coronavirus, because you, you were in the national papers with with your. Um, story there well just because i was one of the uh, unfortunate subs that got it early not because i particularly i mean i didn't do anything you know kind of it's not <laughs> no 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 actual reward for hard work yeah i just happened to get it early either from nadine doris or the week before i had flown uh I had been in Colombia, then Turkey, then Berlin, flying through all those different hub airports, as you can imagine, because I was at the time the shadow foreign minister. So I picked it up somewhere along route and uh, I came down with it for about eight, nine days. Horrible flu, back aches, fevers, hot and cold, that kind of thing, headaches, a bit of a cough, um, but real muscle aches and pains for me. Uh, everyone's slightly different. My staff member got it, lost all his... Um, lost all his taste and smell um, uh, and everything still hasn't fully come back uh, but so but for me uh, I'm, I'm um, that was about a month ago now and since then uh, so I've had kind of like two weeks extra lockdown compared to everyone else so I got it was locked down for two weeks and on the day before um, uh, I got better the whole country went into lockdown uh, so I'm kind of a bit more maybe relaxed about it i've kind of got into the got into the lockdown God. spirit of getting through books and, and and learning to quite like your own company so um so did my brother i think he thinks he's had it and he said he doesn't go out wearing any protection because he thinks he's uh immune now he's gone through it is that do you think that as well or, or I, mean, well, I don't wear known, any i don't wear any protection um the, they think there is some immunity they don't know how long that immunity will last so it might well be that you can be reinfected in a few months time we just don't know right so there's no evidence that immunity will be long term um some coronaviruses give long-term immunity some don't 
So it's not as easy, like SARS, which is very close to this coronavirus, didn't give long-term immunity to it once you had it. So um, there's, that's why there's some argument about whether we should be actually really looking at immunity as the issue. This herd immunity stuff is a load of uh, rubbish. The only way to really do it is track and trace uh, which we haven't been doing because we haven't been doing any testing or enough testing um, compared to other countries. Uh, but um, at the moment, the advice is that I have some immunity um, and uh, you can still pass it on though because you could hold a door handle someone else has sneezed on yeah. and then pass it on to somewhere else. So the physical process of moving still can move the bug around. You know, a door handle has immunity, but it can still have the uh, the bug on it, um, if, if that makes sense, if that's a good kind of analogy. So um, you still should be careful and do all the social distancing stuff. Uh, we Tomorrow we've got a, I live in a little Muse courtyard and we're going to do a, um, a, 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 a little courtyard party where we all sit in our front doors and have drinks and chat and things like this so there's nice social interactions that have come out from it you know kind of our five little houses are all going to have that we won't be able to we'll be about uh, the courtyards about uh, 20 meters uh, long so kind of we'll be shouting across the courtyard but with a bit of music in the middle it should be quite fun and that's been quite that's been the I think the nice thing about this so far is that it has brought bizarrely some people together even though um there's some real downsides as well in terms of uh social isolation um for people who particularly are in difficult relationships domestic abuse and all that kind of thing so we've got to be very careful about it yeah and um and you've also been promoted have you or, or kind of you've been appointed as a member of the is it the front bench in, in, of yeah. the is, what, Technically, the... I was shadow foreign minister, and now I'm. Uh, which uh, the foreign ministry is a funny one. You never do any laws. You just make lots of statements. So if you like the sound of your own voice, then <laughs> um, the foreign department is there. That's possibly why I was put there. Um, and then they've moved me now on to. I'm now the minister for environment and uh, air quality. So there are three ministers in the department for environment. One does food and farming, one does fisheries and water, and the other one, me, does natural habitats, everything else, national parks, um, and uh, air quality, which is really big at the moment, um, because we know that poor air quality exacerbates this bug. Um, if you've lived in an area where there's bad air quality, you are more likely to um, get complications from it. Um, and we have to make some drastic action. And 40,000 people a year die from bad air quality in this country. Um, uh, so it is, it is, you know, the levels that we've gone through over this virus is quite right to protect lives. But the lack of um, things that we do to sort out air quality in this country is, is, um, is shocking when it actually it, it causes as much damage and so we need to be doing a hell of a lot more so that's that's my area now um uh, that i'll be getting a grips with and we've got a huge bill coming through that we'll try and so that because we're leaving europe there's lots of environmental stuff that's got to come over um and the government have decided to create this environment body that will hold them to account that will have no teeth to do that Whereas before Europe would step in and could fine you, could stop you kind of breaking the law, actually now there's a real danger that the agency, the government proposed will be very weak. And so it's very important that we focus on that to uh, stop them getting away with something. Oh, well, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you've, you've got lots to do. You can't be busy in, in lockdown with, with all that on your plate. So um, thanks, for, thanks for coming on to the show. I really appreciate your taking the time. And well, I'm uh, looking forward to a bit of a bank holiday um, uh, entertainment. Well, yeah, if you stick around, you'll, you, we've got five comedians and poetry and Labour members who are, are going to show us what they're doing to protect themselves. So let, let's see how this goes, because it could be quite interesting. Uh, thank you, Lloyd. Um, so what, what, we, what, we're going, what we're going to do now... Well, I'm looking forward to a bit of a bank holiday um, oh my uh, entertainment. Well, yeah, if you stick around, you've been got five playing, um, and poetry and Labour members who are... Someone's uh, playing uh, Facebook, so Black. What can they do? turn that so, off? Let's see how this goes, because it could be quite interesting. Can someone turn... There we are. Oh, sorry. OK, right. Um, right, OK, so I liked hearing my voice again. It wasn't at all for speaking. <laughs> uh, 
But what I thought we'd talk about today with the, with the Labour members and maybe some of the uh, performers, if they're interested, is um, what are you doing to protect yourself uh, from coronavirus? So uh, I've got this I've got this mask here that I bought for doing a bit of DIY. Um, And then I've got I've got some uh, sunglasses because they it can get into your eyes. And then I've got a um, I've got a coat as well that I put on um, just over because it can get into it can get into your ears. You see the uh, stuff can get in your ears. So I've got uh, I'm ready to go out to get some um, milk now. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell Matt Hancock. The only thing is my glasses have <laughs> steamed up a bit um, and I can't really see who, who, what I'm supposed to be doing. So, um, is, is, uh, is, is anyone else out there doing anything like this? Are you doing anything like this, um, Paul, Paul in Canterbury? Are you there? Oh, he's not there. Oh, so it's just me then. Okay. Is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is uh, Kendrick, are you doing anything like this in Blackpool? No, we're not, do I'm not doing any, uh, not wearing anything. We are... You're not wearing anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, any sort of PPE or anything like that. Sort of, um, any sort of uh, protective clothing or anything like that. Any sort of mask or anything. But, uh, You're not worried when about... Things, when when things about come to us, we... Um, when it's delivered to the house, if it's in cardboard, we leave it for about 24 hours. If it's in, uh, if it's in, uh, if it's on a sort of hard surface, we leave it for about three days and uh, wash everything before we store before we use it as well. So, um, we wash our hands and when we touch anything that we've just come from, basically come from outside the house, uh, and if it's come from the freezer, we wash our hands as well. Uh, What's it for about 20? Um, so are you staying yeah, indoors? Is that, is that what you're yeah. doing? Yeah. Yeah. So what going so your out. protection is that you don't leave the house? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good way of doing it. Um, well, I believe Paul is there. Paul, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, oh, I like your one. Uh, is that actually, is that a gimp mask? No, I, <laughs> I, 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 it might as well be, but no, I think it's a bit more Deadpool than Jim. What's your What's your one? Where did you get Deadpool. that? Where did you get that mask? Uh, I work at a charity, and it, for some reason, they thought the homeless needed that sort of mask, so they dropped it in. And and does do you actually wear that to the shop? No, not as yet, but I'm thinking about it and keep them away, won't it? <laughs> so, uh, and, and tell, what else, have you got loads of hand sanitizer? What, how are you doing that? Uh, well, we've we got plenty of, my hands are almost destroyed by the hand sanitizer and we've got loads of gloves and that sort of thing, but we're not really using masks because we can't get the N95 ones, so um, the cloth ones are just as much of a risk as walking down the road. I tend to just... So this one I've got is... Is it any good, this one? Well, I don't know, to be quite honest. I've not had it tested. Yeah, you know, I don't know what the uh, the filtration's like, but I'm, I figure that unless it's sort of like military grade, it's not going to be of any much use. They might. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about the eyes? Do you think you have to cover the eyes? Um, Definitely. No, not for me. I mean, uh, like when I leave my house, I wash my hands before I leave my house. And then by the time I get to work, which is the only other place I go, really, I don't touch anything. It's as simple as that. So when I get to work, then I wash my hands and hopefully I'm good. Well, that's so, I'm sorry about this. I'm at work right at the moment. I've got a client who's just knocking the door and I need to go and address him. So I'll be back oh, shortly. Well, you, you've done well. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I just caught sight of you there, Mike Poku. Yeah, I'm here, brother. You are Chris, how are you? So I keep playing with my camera, the uh, signal keeps going for some strange reason. What do you wear to, to the shop? Well, it, the frustrating thing is I can't actually get hold of any uh, masks, preferably the one like yours. Like We have a massive retail park in uh, Enfield near where I live. 
and the B and Q's all sold out of the DIY masks. My sunglasses have uh, recently broke, so I can't cover my eyes, which are important. I, I think you're doing the right thing. So usually when I go to the shops, I take my uh, my gloves. I get my um, Willy gloves, winter gloves, so I've, my hands are covered. But then I've got like my head covered with my hood and everything like that. And the thing is, the weather's so hot, and it just makes me look like I'm dressed for the wrong weather. It makes me <laughs> so it makes me feel really out of place. What do you think I feel like looking like this? <laughs> Natural. Yeah, but you... <laughs> what, 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 what are you saying about what you wear gloves in the, in the summer and you think that looks bad? Not not generally in in the summer, oh. but obviously for this occasion because you know you could be touching anything and you know I'm reading now that coronavirus can stay on the surface for like a good day or two. Right. And I'm asthmatic like you, Crispin. I can't afford to, you know, get ill. <laughs> yeah, got... Sorry, I shouldn't have laughed about that. Sorry. Have you got a new inhaler? Did you get a new inhaler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my inhaler. Oh, yeah. listen. Come on. No, I love for this personal stuff. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so have, have we got um have we got Rona there? Rona? Let me have a look. Yeah. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Uh, hi, um, Mona. Hi. Yeah. I've turned my uh, I've turned my uh, my strategy uh, for uh, dealing with coronavirus into a little jingle. So, is it okay if I just do? Uh, I sort of just explain what I'm doing to uh, to to uh, prevent coronavirus in my in a form of a little jingle there, Rose. Is that okay? Yeah, only got a minute, so you've got about half a minute now. Is that right, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I can't forget a wonderful DVD. And I'm staying at home. I'm staying at home. I'm home every day and night. And I wouldn't be without my antibacterial wife. So, chemical and CBD and. And a lot of hand washing. Uh, um, Wendy, Wendy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Kristen. Uh, you, what do you do to just keep yourself safe? Well, I haven't got any of your gear. Um, up here in the East Midlands, we're just keeping our distance and washing our hands a lot. A lot. So I, I don't know. I can't remember where you are. Are you in the south? Is that yeah, why? Yeah, in the south. Yeah, that's what you, uh, think, what you might be. think about us, don't you? You'll think we're all from yeah. the south. Yeah. yeah. Do you, think we, do you think people in the south are more neurotic than in the north? I have no idea. I'm just looking at you and wondering, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well uh, uh, thank, thanks for that. And, and Alison, in, in, are you there in Windsor? I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, calling oh, back. Back, back. But uh, Alison's not there, no? She is, but we can't hear her. Oh, Mike, I'm getting... Oh, right, Jane, 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 I'll see you now. Jane, how, okay. how, how are you doing? What do you do when you go out to the shop? Well, I can't go out because Isaac's vulnerable, and now he's stuck inside because I've got no sunblock and he's ginger, so he's even more... <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, I'm Ziflora everything, so it smells beautiful and clean. But we can't really go outside, so I'm in the garden sunbathing, and he's waving through the window to me, bless him. So, oh. And we've run out of ice cream, so I've had to freeze rice pudding and make an ice cream as well. So Freeze rice pudding? Yeah, if you blitz the rice pudding to get it, like, the lumps out, you can freeze it and make ice cream. Oh. So. Well, Turning into a coconut, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark, Mark, you, Mark, what's your, what's your, what your family do? You're not taking any precautions, apparently. Sue's just came in from shopping. She's, she's masked uh, and uh, all the wipes, all the hand rubs, and all that sort of stuff. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> she's just brought her old salmon in there. He's probably he's turning into a cooking show, isn't he? <laughs> Is that a salmon? Yeah, the boys are upstairs. 
we had a, 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 a little we had a little trouble yesterday so we had a wi-fi free day and uh the back upstairs now because i've turned the wi-fi back on yesterday i was a terrible <coughs> so all right so you turned the wi-fi off yeah yeah Okay, so so uh, you're, anyway, that salmon looks amazing. I'm more interested in that than any gear that they might be wearing. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're gonna um, we're gonna move on because Susie's looking like she's getting a bit bored out there in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm soaking up the rain. I don't want to take this off anyway because it's too hot and I can't. Take it. <laughs> oh god! Right now. Uh, what what we're going to do now is we're going to talk to um, we're going to talk to Janine Booth. Are you there, Janine? Oh come on! Hello, how are you all Hello. doing? Hi, Janine. Uh, are, are you doing any um, are you doing any stuff to because you work in the for the? Well, tell us about your job and what you have to do to protect yourself. Yeah, I'm a I'm a night tube station supervisor, which is why I look a bit knackered because um, I was at work last night. And it's interesting you all talking about what you wear to protect yourself from coronavirus. Because what I wear to protect myself from coronavirus is a trade union badge. Um, because there's nothing better than yeah. strong union organisation in the workplace. Um, so, for instance, one one of the things we've done on London Underground is very early on in the pandemic we won that cleaners um, get full self-isolation pay and full sick pay. Um, before they hadn't done that, um, despite us having a Labour mayor, unfortunately, the cleaners on L London Underground are paid rubbish money and don't get any sick pay other than statutory sick pay. Um, but when the pandemic started, our union, the RMT, demanded that they should get full pay and we won. Um, and it's the union in the workplace that has been enforcing social isolation measures, um, etc. But my uh, station's like a ghost town there. Say it again, stations? My station is like a ghost town. Which is your station? That's a good thing. I'm the night supervisor at Highbury and Islington Station. And, oh, um, wow, Highbury yeah, Islington. No really? one's coming through. That's a good thing. Good. Means yeah, right, you, Mike, you don't have to comment on people's stations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying to have an interview here, Mike. You don't have to get involved in the stations thing. <laughs> You can mute me. Oh, I'll mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Janine, but I, I've asked you to come on the show because you're doing a, a, a poetry initiative around coronavirus. Can you tell us what that's all about? Yeah, sure. So on the 18th of March, which is the day after kind of semi-lockdown started, I set up a Facebook group called Corona Versus Poems from the Pandemic that anyone could join and could post their poems because... Um, you know, when bad, scary things happen, people turn to poetry, don't they? It allows you to express yourself in some kind of way that other things don't for some reason. Um, I didn't expect it to take off quite as much as it did, but it's got like nearly 700 people there and there's like new poems being put for every half an hour or something. Wow. And I had thought from the start that maybe eventually we'd be able to do an anthology, um, but it went so well that it soon became clear that we could do an anthology just of poems that were published in the first week and just are the best of them okay so that was published as an ebook um last week uh hosts if you can if you could just enable um allow participants to share screen i can oh, show no, people no, the not, screen uh, no because i'm not letting any anyone called there's a tony blair virus person <laughs> all right oh that's a shame isn't it and okay so tony blair put a virus on this show so. It's uh, well, yeah, he's known for that, hasn't he? Um, <laughs> so it is available if you do ebooks, right? Go to books to read dot com slash coronaverses dash poems. I think okay. we can put that on the chat. Uh, yeah, I'll put it in the yeah. chat. Um, put that in the chat. So I put your Facebook page to here. read dot com slash coronaverses uh, dash poems. Right. And yeah. I. No, I say to myself, it's really rather good. Have you got um, a and for us? Because we're, we're running out of time. And I, I'm, okay. I'm, I've, let pe I've, let, I've let people off the hook with that bong thing. So we've got to get... Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, look, Mark, you've let me down. And I'm not saying to me, <laughs> you're, not, you're not getting bonged, but it'd be good if... Yeah. We, if could you lead, lead us out with a poem? Okay. Um, uh, okay, so I'm going to do a poem. A poem, all right, I should do a poem that I wrote 
just before the coronavirus pandemic was declared. Um, I wrote it earlier this year when the Tories announced that when Britain leaves the EU, they're going to introduce a points-based immigration system and unskilled people like care workers won't hit the bar and won't be allowed in. So look around you now. You think care workers are unskilled? I don't think many people actually do. So anyway, this is a poem in response to that and it's, it seems more pertinent than ever now. This is called Unskilled. You don't have skills. You're just a carer, a labourer, an apron wearer. You smear on creams and dish out pills. You don't have skills. You don't have skills. You just wipe asses, the underside of the underclasses. You mop up, drool, make tea and chat. Where's the skill in that? You're a manual handler, a heavy lifter, a later night, an early shifter. You're a miracle worker a first responder, a 15 minute magic wonder, a jargon buster and explainer, understander, trier gainer, kit inspector, friend and neighbour, disinfector, dressing changer, food preparer, medicator, burden bearer, educator, precious company, progress praiser, rarely grumpy spirit raiser, Boister, chopper, cleaner, duster, moisture mopper, dose adjuster, symptom spotter, reading taker, noter jotter, arrangement maker, passage easer, pain reliever, comfort giver, helpful griever. But you don't work with lathes or drills. You don't have skills. Your wages barely pay your bills. You don't have skills. You're patient, caring, brave, strong-willed, but still unskilled. That's why that vacancy's unfilled. Wow, very good. Woo. Thank, thank you, Janine. I'm sorry we had to, we, we were going to do two poems, but I realised no that, that maybe I've been going on too long, I don't know. But uh, anyway, we, we, we're going on a bit too, and I wanted to get uh, to talk to some of our comedians, because we've got five today, uh, including uh, Patrick. How are you doing, Patrick? All right, Chris Finn, how are you doing? You looking well? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good to see everyone here as well. Good to see you again. Do you know what I like about that? For anyone who's new to the chat, what you look like today, you look like what it would be like if Miami Vice were running the Labour Party. <laughs> 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 I'd be looking, Lily was walking past that. Look, she thought I was on some sort of dodgy chat room. <laughs> 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 I said, oh, it's crispy. She didn't recognise you with that bit. And then you had that mask on, you look like... Oh, my God. Well, that's why I wore the mask, isn't it? But anyway, yeah. so what, what, um, what have you been up to? Have you, have you been out shopping and spending yeah. hours again? Do you know what I've been doing? I've been... Uh, uh, I was chatting to a few people, obviously social distancing and just uh, listening to bits and pieces, chatting on the phone. And there's a lot, I tell you what I'm worried about at the moment, there's a lot of conspiracy theories going around. And a lot of family, friends and people being saying that they think this virus is man-made. And I just think it is a bit daft. I mean, I don't know if you all saw this, but there was a lot of stuff recently about these 5G towers. I don't understand what it is. And they were saying that David Icke's come back to save us. And then I heard once a uh, conspiracy theory was that Batman had slept with Peppa Pig and this is what actually caused the virus. <laughs> and I just thought, I think it's got a bit out of hand. And I, and I think that we, we watched the movie the other night about, and there was a documentary about how the virus, uh, how they start and mutate. And I think, I mean, I'm always a bit skeptical about stuff, but I do think if it is a man-made virus, I think it was created by cycling clubs. Because the whole, where we live now, everywhere, no one's driving cars. It's just the roads and pavements are took over by cyclists, <laughs> micro, with helmets. And they're doing about 100 miles an hour, flying around the place. So I've got a feeling, if anyone did create it, I've, I've got a feeling it's probably them. And the other thing as well, though, is, you know, I was looking at the, the sporting events and stuff. Obviously, as you know, and, and most people probably know, loads of events have been cancelled for the summer, like Edinburgh Festival. But also things like... Um, Wimbledon and stuff like this not that I, I mean I was never really into tennis but I just thought if we're still in lockdown then what I might do is sit in the garden and just pretend I've paid £10 for some strawberries and just set fire to a tenner 
and just start throwing stuff over the neighbor's fence. <laughs> Put my own windows in, you know, backward and forwards. But one quick story, I'll leave you with this very quickly, um, was really good, and I was going to mention it before, but it was, and this was the most positive thing I've seen, and I think this is what we should all do is, you know, with this exercise and stuff, this guy uh, ran a marathon in his back garden. I know there's a few people who, who have been trying to do this thing, and, and it was brilliant. I thought it was really inspiring. He did, he did about 1,300 laps around his garden. And oh what I'm going to do, if we can do this on Zoom, is I'm going to create our own Olympics for, because, you know, obviously Tokyo has been postponed now to 2021. And I think it's a great idea. You know, we can all do, like, throw javelin, throw some shot punch, you know, do them sort of things. Because there's people in our street, probably the same here, where there's lovely people, but there's a few people on your WhatsApp group that are just doing your head in. And it'd be good to just throw javelin just at them. You know, it gets, it gets a bit of frustration off your chest. You mean kill them with a javelin? Yeah, it's been good, really. Other than wanting to kill people with traveling, <laughs> it's all right. Then. Anyone, I w I'm just sending positivity and love. <laughs> oh, okay. Athletic, athletic um, frustration. Yeah. All right, well, th thanks, Patrick. Uh, I'll move on now to uh, Don. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, Crispin. Uh, Patrick was about? talking about conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. And I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist myself which means people have been social distancing from me even before the pandemic started. <laughs> but just a few things, because I know that we need to move on. Um, some people say this uh, pandemic could last up to two years or longer. So it's lasted longer than Theresa May did as Prime Minister. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about our current leader as well. Thank God he's on the mend. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even know that Dominic Cummins was even sick. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, how would our previous world leaders dealt with the coronavirus? I think Barack Obama would have fired a drone at it. Uh, <laughs> I think David Cameron would have held a referendum on whether to lift restrictions or not. And if the result didn't go his way, uh, he would have resigned. And finally, I think Bill Clinton would have tried to shag the coronavirus. <laughs> Uh, a few more things. First of all, uh, before I leave, is um, society is slowing down. I've said that in previous things. For example, exams have been held back for a year, even COVID-19 testing. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, so two more things. First of all, I was watching the BBC News and I saw refugees in Calais, and we need to help them. Because the refugee crisis, I get it, I really do. Because during the 1970s, my dad moved to England to flee persecution from India. Unfortunately, my mum managed to track him down. <laughs> Good stuff, Don. Just one more thing, Crispin, before more, I go. More. I'd like to congratulate uh, Jess Phillips on a new job, Minister for Stabbing People in the Front. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you're, you're, on top, you're on top form, Don. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for that. Um, so we've got um, we've got um, Ed Axel. Are you there, oh, Ed? Are we? Are we? Uh, yep. Ed's not been on the show before, so he's he's you he, um you, you don't know you haven't seen this sort of thing before, have you? Where we talk about lockdown. Are you enjoying lockdown? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's kind of not much different to being an unemployed comedian and. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's kind of normal life for me, um, you know. Are you eating? You look really healthy, actually. You look healthier than I've ever seen you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> well, I've just got back from Nepal. Um, uh, I was out there for two months doing voluntary work. So um, we we got back with the. We got back just before all the airports were closed and all that sort of stuff, which um, which is. Which was sad, but um, kind of um, normal life back here. Um, I'm doing my garden. Uh, well, I wouldn't say it's a garden; it's a courtyard, but well, it's a backyard. Um, but I'm going for a Corsican um, fisherman villa. Look. <laughs> what does that look like then? Just loads of rocks. Well, white. Just generally painting everything white at the moment. Um, yeah, it's lovely. 
absolutely lovely out there. But that's what you do. You, your gardening involves painting things white. Yeah, essentially <laughs> painting everything white. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I've not heard of that kind of gardening before. Yeah. I, I might, I might try it myself. It sounds easier yeah. than, than a lot of the things other people do. Yeah, well, it's it's it's, it's, it's gonna. It's, it's, the idea about painting everything white was so it would be a bit brighter in there, but it's still a bit dark. <laughs> <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to next time we you're on you've got to come, go out and show us your your garden will you will you do that have you got yeah i will yeah sure. definitely, definitely i've got <laughs> when, when we catch up with you next we'll, we'll we'll look at your garden and i'll i want to see maybe you'll have done a bit more painting before then as well yeah oh yeah yeah i've done loads for the show just literally show. literally every day i'm out there pottering around <laughs> all right well thank thank Thanks, Ed. Um, no, pleasure. Uh, Matt Hoss is here as well. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Matt did a show for Stand Up for Labour in, in Rotherham during the yes. election. And, um, and that was a seat that we won. So <laughs> I think it was all down to me personally, because beforehand <laughs> they, were kind of, they were touch and go, but then I did my, uh, I'm going to say smashing set. So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's been good. Like, uh, like a bit like Ed, like I've kind of, um, I kind of took to this. Uh, this is this has been like my situation as it is. You know, I mean, I feel like uh, I've been kind of training for the this uh, lockdown for like the, my whole life. This is my Olympic Games, and I've I've been uh, smashing it. You know, what I mean, like uh, you know, just uh, I it, I'm such an introvert that like uh, I haven't even thought like going outside for the last five days, and I'm having the greatest time. And, and <laughs> I know people are struggling so much, but I'm also like, mm, but I'm having fun. Yeah, you know I mean, like, uh, and it like. I, I, I'm a video game nerd as well, so I um, um, like it took me it took me about two hours into the lockdown before I started a Twitch stream, and uh, of course that was going to happen. If you know what I mean, uh, I played Civilization VI for eighteen hours in the last five days. You know, what I mean, like I, I, I'm very single at the moment. That's that's the, the bottom line. <laughs> what 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 are you good at these video games? Is there good? Is are there a lot of new people coming in to play these games now because of lockdown? Um, yeah, I think a, a lot of comedians have as well. Uh, so it's quite. I've been playing a lot of uh, video games with comedians, which has been quite fun. Uh, or, uh, and yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think there's been more, but I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 well, I certainly have more time just to sit down. And uh, since I don't have any gigs, I just feel like there's absolutely no guilt whatsoever. So I'm just like. Uh, I've, I've kind of reverted back to my like uh, teenage self really because uh, uh, instead of like playing yeah just pre pre pretty much just playing Skyrim in my underpants all day so uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very it's, it's kind of transgressed but um, but yeah it's, it's been good though like um, uh, another perk of a uh, uh, lockdown is that in, especially in the first couple of weeks we had a lot, uh, uh, like we, a lot of people were struggling to get food and stuff like that but I'm a vegan and I loved when I went to shops that the whole of the vegan aisles were just full I was like oh this is great you know this is honestly my time to shine <laughs> so how long have you been a vegan uh, I've been vegan about four years, so I, I, I put the hours in, and now, uh, and this is uh, this is where it's paying off. You know, this is uh, this is where it's getting good. Oh, well, well, good, good to see you. We'll, we'll catch up with you again uh, in a week. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. I uh, well, can't our, wait. Our last, our last comedian um, for uh, today is Susie. Are you, are you there, Susie? Hello. Can you now hear you're, me? You're enjoying it outside in the garden. Oh. I'm baking. I just had to come off because the iPad overheated and stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I've got me This is my best friend at the moment. It's one of those special water bottles that gives you a mark of how much you're supposed to drink. And um, they're very good as well if you're lying in bed drinking red wine. You won't <laughs> spill it on yourself. Oh my god. That. I'll be doing that. I've been enjoying the nature in the garden. We've got some lovely birds and we usually listen to the blackbirds, but the last few days we've had a new one and we didn't know what bird it was. So mum went on YouTube and it turns out it's great tits, um, which was a shame because the, the neighbour was a sunbathing in a bikini at the time and she shouted it across to me. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm about to do my exercise regime. Would you like to see what I'm doing? Yes. And I'm, I'm just going to yes. flip the camera around a minute to show you. I've got my, my equipment out of the shed. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. that's quite good. This is a power plate. What do you do with that? I've seen them in the gym. You've got oh, it's a, it's a wobble thing. You sit on it and wobble. Sit on it and wobble. I'm just going to get my mum to 
Because I've got I've got my gear on. Can you see? <laughs> put my medals on. Um, I find like it's a it's a motivational tool to put my medals on. I mean, I know Patrick Monaghan likes to write about all the charity runs he does, but um, you know, I've got a few. Um, this one, I, I walked 13 miles through London in the middle of the night in my bra for yeah. that one. Um, I wasn't even in the competition. I just got caught <laughs> off in it one night and joined in. Um, that one's not even a medal. It's a uh, Torval and Dean dancing on ice souvenir I got <laughs> one time. Um, but I'm going to show you how it works. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Easter! <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't see. We, we're not get. We're you not can't watching me if I break. You have to talk, or we won't. We won't see you. So you have to talk and eat and be on that. <laughs> <time. It's finished. laughs> I can't really hear you very well. Yeah, it, you know, the camera doesn't go on you unless you're talking. So what you've got to do is talk, eat, and sit oh. at the machine at the same time. Well, talking and eating is my two favourite hobbies. <laughs> I haven't even watched if Columbo was on today. Because I thought, I'll tell you what was on, the, the greatest story ever told. And I was a bit disappointed to find it wasn't about Torval and Dean and the Sarajevo Olympics in 1984. <laughs> I thought Charlton Heston um, would have made a good quiz for Dean, actually. I'm properly wobbling now. <laughs> <laughs> should we should we leave should we leave you there with your mini yeah, eight? Yeah, please leave me here. <laughs> Looking forward to watching this play back later. Yeah, good, good to see you, Susie. Good to see you in your chest. <laughs> oh, Bye. Um, yeah, so so what we um, I think we've had a very busy show um, today, and um, we've got we've got our, our final uh, act come. Uh, he's he's there with host. Uh, and he's just to he him. Have his guitar to hand. He always seems to have his guitar to hand. Well, he's, he's like um, Hank Williams. Is that he, he had his guitar wherever he went, didn't he, or something? Or was that Johnny Cash? I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> one of them. Oh. Maybe both of them. Um, so are you, are you up for... Um, you've got so many... You, you are unbelievably prolific in your songwriting, aren't you, Rob? Well, you, uh, I think a songwriter is only as good as his next song, or her next song, really. That keeps you going then, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a permanent state of anxiety. Because <laughs> well, you, well, uh, your last song that you, you performed was really moving um, and, and you know, everyone was talking about it afterwards. So um, you've got to match that. I mean, that's not going to be easy. No, 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 it's not. I'm having a bit of a rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a, yeah, I, it has to be something organic. Um, so, um, yeah, um, I haven't written anything since then. But I can do the NHS song if that's a good idea. Yeah. Would yeah. you would you would you do that for us? I'd certainly love to do that. I've even rewritten the end verse, so okay, right. There's nothing special. It's much the same as yours. I might be twenty-seven or I might be sixty-four. And you might be five weeks early, or I might be 95. But it won't be hope and glory that's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, that's the ballad of the NHS. The ballad of the NHS. Well, a sister from the NHS, she held my mother's hand. The day I took my first breath free at the point of demand and when I had the measles and when I bashed me knee this doctor from the NHS she fixed me up for free oh yes that's the ballad of the NHS all join in please that's the ballad of the NHS once more that's the ballad of the NHS that's the ballad of the NHS. And though the pound devalues and up the Beatles break, well, we knew that we could carry on with Matron Hattie Jakes. And it might just be a little 
prick to you, but not to me. And if you're feeling Tom and Dick, they treat you equally. Oh, yes, that's the ballad of the NHS. That's the ballad of the NHS. Well, you might be hoity-toity, or you might be common as muck. But it shouldn't depend on the money you've got, it shouldn't depend on your luck. Cause everybody's body gets sick and tired and stressed. So everybody's body deserves the very best. Oh yes, that's the ballad of the NHS. That's the ballad of the NHS. So here's to all the nurses, all the paramedic crews, the doctors, midwives, porters, all those cooks and cleaners too. And I'd like to see celebrities and politicians do a day's work half as useful and as low paid as you do. Oh yeah, that's the battle of the NHS. That's the battle of the NHS. Despite the years of PFI and then austerity, and some of you will have to die for herd immunity. Well, you might be five weeks early or you might be 95, but it won't be clapping Boris that's keeping you alive. Oh, yes, that's the ballad of the NHS. That's the ballad of the NHS. Oh, Matron! That's the ballad of the NHS. So Matt Hancock, let's give him a trolley and he, he can push it around the wards like my neighbour John does without any protective clothing. Come on Matt, show us how it's done. Here's your trolley. That's the ballad of the NHS. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Rob. Pleasure. Pleasure. Um, and uh, you're doing the uh, We Shall Overcome Isolation Festival uh, today, which is on at the same time as this. I haven't mentioned it while we're on because I didn't want everyone to leave. But after this is finished, you're welcome to go over to the We Shall Overcome Isolation uh, Festival, yeah. which is raising funds for people who, who are struggling. So uh, that would be great if you could do that. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's uh, participated in today's show and all the co-hosts and the other people behind the scenes. And I'd also like to um, ask if you are um, feeling generous enough, if you could um, donate at all to this uh, show, because we're trying to put two on a, every week. And we're also trying to raise funds for some of the performers who aren't getting any live work other than through virtual shows. And it's not easy for them to get by. I know it's not easy for anyone. Um, and uh, so that would be great if you could do that. We'll have the link um, on, I'll, I'll send the link out in an email after the show. So if you want to donate, you can go through that. And we're also on Facebook. We've got a Facebook donate button there. Um, and we'll be back on, Wednesday, but I'd also like to say that on Saturday next week, we're going to do a new show after this. So it'd be from 3.45, we'll have a discussion, um, like a Labour Party meeting with a motion, and we'll allow people to talk for a couple of minutes on the motion and come up with a vote at the end. And we're just drawing up a motion at the moment. If you've got any ideas about what you would like to be discussed, then get in touch and, and we'll try and put these motions through. So every week we'll have a Labour Party meeting because at the moment there are no Labour Party meetings. And just to finish, I'd like to say that this show is really about showing the strength of the Labour Party, the members, the community that we have, how, how good we are for each other um, during a crisis and how good we can be to each to the communities we're in. Um, and that needs to keep being shown all the time and that's why I want to do this program twice a week and keep showing how good the Labour Party is as a community. Mm. So um, thank you all for coming along and watching and uh, have a good weekend. Enjoy the We Shall Overcome Festival 
and I'm going to end the show now. So bye bye. I'll just bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye everyone. Bye. I'll mute everyone now so you all can say bye bye to each other for Chris a minute to say bye Rob. Here you go. Bye Don. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.